हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एस एन आर अकेडमी फिर ऑनलाइन कोचिंग फॉर गेट इन डी एस टू थाउजेंड एटीन सो फ्रेंड्स सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अवर लेक्चर टू कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम्स द कंटिन्यूएशन फ्रॉम लेक्चर वन सो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस लेक्चर सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस लेक्चर आई एक्चुअली लाइक टू टेल फ्यू थिंग्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ यू हैवेंट वॉज द लेक्चर वन प्लीज गो एंड सी लेक्चर वन बिकॉज I am going to continue from where I left in lecture one. So, if you haven't watched the lecture one, please go through the lecture one once. So, friends, today before I start this lecture two, I would like to tell you about how to approach the exam, how to approach this subject for the exam. So, basically, friends, uh, in my lecture, I am going to cover the complete syllabus, whatever is required for GATE and IES. But from your side. you need to put in effort as well so how you should approach how you should as a student approach this subject so friends first of all making notes is very important so if you are watching this lecture so it would be better if you sit down with a pen and paper in hand and note down the the complete thing that i am telling so i'm i will try to go slow so that you can note down i will try to read everything so that you can note it down and you don't need to watch this lecture again when you want to go through the through the subject again so friends notes zarur banaiye notes aap do tarike se bana sakte hain ek hoga aapka full notes so full notes should be the complete thing so it should you should you should not miss anything that i am telling here so full notes should be the complete thing thoda mote banenge lekin kabhi aapko dobara dekhna hoga to aap usko dekh ke पूरे पूरी चीज फिर से अंडरस्टैंड कर सकते हैं आपको वापस इस लेक्चर पे आने की जरूरत नहीं है देन द सेकेंड वन वुड बी शॉर्ट नोट्स तो शॉर्ट नोट्स विल कम इनटू पिक्चर वंस यू आर डन विद वन टॉपिक से से व्हेन आई फिनिश दिस एम्पलीट्यूड मॉडुलेशन पार्ट यू कैन हैव अ शॉर्ट नोट्स ऑफ वन मैक्सिमम वन टू टू पेज सो दैट वुड कंटेन योर फॉर्मूलाज एंड ऑल द शॉर्टकट टेक्निक्स दैट आई एम टेलिंग इन बिटवीन so because you are writing a competitive exam so you need to finally remember the formulas however good you are at the concepts you know the derivation but you cannot derive it at the exam time so you have to know the formulas you have to know the shortcuts to attempt those those many number of questions in the exam in the given time so you have a time limitation so for that short notes is very important then after you prepare the short notes then you can go to solving the questions so question solving is the most important part because finally you have to understand the concepts in a way that you can apply them in the in the questions you are attempting so questions from where you can attempt as i already told gate and ies questions are must you have to solve them you can directly find gate and ies questions asked in several other examinations so if you are thorough in going through the questions of gate and ies you are definitely going to succeed in other exams as well and if you get some time after that then you can go to the standard books and pick up questions from there and solve them so that way you can enhance your whatever you have learned in theory and you can apply it in questions so question solving is very very important friends let's start this lecture 2 today so lecture 2 today would be basically the continuation of lecture 1 i will not call this complete lecture well i'll start a new topic i'll just go i will just revise what we had done in the previous lecture and we then we'll see a few questions so questions just because we already saw some theory so let's just practice some questions on that so we are good enough to so to finish this topic and then we will move to the next topic friends let's just move to let's just start with the revision from where we left in the lecture 1 So lecture one, what did we learn in lecture one? So lecture one, I basically told you these basic functions. So make sure you have notes of these and just write down the important points which you have to later figure it out. Later write it down in the short notes. So yeah, then we saw the unit step, rectangular pulse, sampling function, where I defined the sink and the sampling, how to change from sink to sampling and vice versa so the sink definition is very important here 
then we learnt about fourier transform and its properties friends just to correct one thing from the previous lecture i by mistake here when i wrote the inverse transform i wrote dt here so this should be d omega so you can correct this if you have written it down wrong so this is so when you are writing inverse fourier transform the integration is with respect to the variable omega so then we saw some properties of fourier transform which we saw time shifting property frequency shifting time scaling also the time reversal which was a direct result from the time scaling property then we saw the fourier transform for impulse function and the very important property which is duality so duality in gate you find a lot of questions you won't find direct fourier transform asked they will somehow try to use this duality property in the question so we saw the duality property how to use it in f domain and as well as the omega domain then we use this duality property to find the fourier transform of a constant we also found the fourier transform for cos and sin functions and we called it as modulation property so today we we'll solve few questions on this property as well then we we find the fourier transform for the unit step function then we define the gate pulse which was similar to a rectangular pulse but symmetrical about the origin and we found the fourier transform using the conventional method then i told you the shortcut to find this fourier transform so this shortcut this should definitely go into your short notes so this is a part this is a part for your short, short notes the competitive exams you can directly use this and find the fourier transform directly for this rectangular pulse and this triangular pulse then i have used this duality property because we knew the fourier transform for this gate pulse i brought this fourier transform the frequency domain function to the time domain and concluded that the fourier transform for this one would be now a gate pulse in the frequency domain then we saw the type of filters where we saw the low pass band pass and the high pass filters they are frequency response characteristics for the ideal filters then when we started communication systems we saw two types of channels wired and wireless why we saw the types of signals that we transmit using using these channels so the voice signal audio signal and the video signal they are respective bandwidth and then we saw the block diagram for the wired and wireless system where we found out that the modulation is the difference between the wired and the wireless system so we understood why did we need this modulation so to reduce the antenna height and to get the advantage of multiplexing then i defined the term bandwidth how to find bandwidth or what is the definition of bandwidth so that was the highest frequency component minus the lowest frequency component so we saw a signal where we saw the bandwidth was infinite so we couldn't transmit it to all these wired mediums that i had written down here coaxial cable parallel wire and optical fibers then finally we saw how to band limit that infinite bandwidth signal so that we can use it for transmission so we uh, change it to a finite bandwidth signal so this would be the next topics to start but before we start that i like to go through some questions on the topics we had already done so these questions would be basically on signals and systems most of them so we'll just they will just, just help you to brush up your signals and systems basics so let's look at the question one now so i suggest you that if you just pause this video see the question try to solve it by yourself and then try to see how i am solving this So let's see the question one first part. So what is it asking here? It's asking you to find the integration of minus infinite to infinite del t cos three t by two dt. So you know this del t function. It is defined at t is equal to zero only. So I can easily say when I am multiplying these two signals, I'll get a signal which is defined at t is equal to zero only. 
so my this minus infinite to infinite integration would be just this would be just defined as t is equal to zero only now. So basically, this integration will now change to this. This this, is, this will become the value of this signal del t cos v t by two at t is equal to zero only. So del t, as you know, this is this has the area one. So this will give an area one. And if you put t is equal to zero here, the cos zero would be one. So this value is one. So the value of this integral is one. So this is the solution to first part. So here just we are using the property of del t. How del t is just limiting the signal to t is equal to zero only. Then let's see the second question. So the second question is similar type of question. But what you find here is I have given t plus one by two. So as you know, the del t is defined as t is equal to zero only. But because this is now t is has been replaced with t plus one, so this is now shifted to or uh, because this is t plus one, this should be shifted to minus one. So now your impulse function has come here. So this the impulse function which we have now del t plus one would be now defined at minus one value only. So we can simply say that this integration should be minus two to three. Now t value should be minus one here. So it becomes minus pi by two. So minus one is still lying in this range, whatever minus two to three. That is why this integration. I am using this value minus one here. If this limit was outside, say it was minus four or something, then this integration would directly become zero because impulse function is not defined only for that. So yeah, I can write this. But there is a property that you have studied in your signals and systems which says the del of a into t. Is equals to one by mod a del of t. So you can see here that t. It's not exactly t here. It's t by two. So it's not only shifting, it also scaling. So if I use this property del of a t, so it becomes one by mod a. So what is the value of a here? A is actually half. So it should be become it should become two del of t. So if I want to change this, it becomes like twice of del t plus one. And we already know del t plus one is defined as t is equal to minus one only. So that's what I have used here. But this factor two is now extra, so I have to account for this factor two also. So now you know that value of minus sine pi by two. Minus sine pi by two is minus one, so this value should be minus two. So this is the answer for this question. Mm -hmm. So what is important here is to note this scaling property of impulse function. So using this property, we got this value as minus two. So this is the solution for this question. Now, if you understood this, let's just move to the next question. So here, I just put a convolution question, although I didn't teach convolution because that is a part of signals. But there's a little trick that I wanted to tell you here, so that is why I put this question here. So, friend, tricks tricks are very important. You should know the conventional method, but to approach faster in competitive exams, you have to know these tricks. So. What is this trick here? So basically, I am asking here the y t the output when we are convolving x t and h t. So if you see the first part here, what is x t and h t are given here? Both are rectangular pulses of same width. So you, if you see here, the width are same. Both are defined from zero to two. The values may be different. That is fine. So what is the trick here? Is uh, the trick here is that When you see two rectangular pulses of same width, so the 
convolution of them would be a triangular curve that is for sure so first thing the trick is when you see two rectangular pulses of same width the output is a triangular pulse now how to find the these starting and end values and the amplitude of this triangular pulse so we can do that directly so if you look at this rectangular pulse the sum of the lower limits would be the lower limit of the output triangular pulse and the sum of the upper limits would be the output for the upper limit of the triangular pulse so the lower limit becomes 0 0 plus 0 and 2 plus 2 4 becomes the upper limit now the value part so you see this what is the amplitude of these signals is 1 and 2 so how are, how can i find this value so i am saying that slope of this triangular pulse would be the multiplication or the product of the amplitudes of the two rectangular pulses so the slope becomes 2 so i know that uh, this value is 2 the central value would be 2 so if i know the slope of this line is coming to be 2 so i know that this value which would be here is is 4 so slope is now so if you do delta y by delta x 4 by 2 you get the slope so this is how I find this value, the amplitude of the triangular curve. So this is a shortcut friends, you can directly find the convolution of the triangular curve of two same widths. Now the same question, but what is different here is, I am taking the widths as different, different this time. So one is defined from 0 to 1, the other is defined from 0 to 2. So now what you will get, instead of getting a triangular pulse, you will get a trapezoidal pulse, something like this. So again to find the limits here, this is your yt, again to find the limits here, this lower limit is again the sum of the lower limits, the upper limit is sum of the upper limit. So this is 0, this is 3. Now these values, so this value you can say you can use this lower limit and this upper limit together so 0 and 1 you get the sum 1 and then you can use this lower limit and this upper limit together so this value you will get as 2 so this is how you can define this trapezoidal pulse so again the slope would be the product of the amplitude so slope is here 1 so this value should be 1 because the slope is 1. So this is how you find the convolution for rectangular pulses with different widths. So this is another shortcut, you should definitely put this in your chart notes. So now moving to the next question which is like we are used to use. You see the how to convolve with an impulse function. So it's, it is a pretty straightforward question here. So this one, so it is asking you to find y t as convolution of x of minus t del of minus t minus t. So how I'll approach this question is because I know x t convolution del t is del t. Or similar to this, you have, if you have x t convolution del t minus t minus, maybe this is not del t here, this should be x t. So, convolving with impulse function gives you back the same function. So, if I convolve with del t minus t naught, I will get the same function, will be shifted by t naught. So, this is the property that we should be aware of. So, using this property, first of all, what I'll do, I'll let, I'll use the variable t only. I'm not taking minus t. So, if I see this as this one, it's basically xt convolution del t minus t naught. So, I directly know that it, it's going to be x t minus t naught. Now what is the difference in this and the question asked is like the variable t 
is now minus t. Variable t is minus t. So simply I replace the variable t with minus t in my final output as well. So this becomes my answer. So this is how to convolve using the convolve with a impulse function. Mm -hmm. We will find the Fourier transform of these following signals. So this part I already told you how to use the shortcut for this. So I will directly write the Fourier transform for these two using the same shortcut. So as I already told you this is ft. So this is a gate pulse. So how to find its Fourier transform? You know it is going to be a sampling function. And here the here the value is going to be omega into width by 2. So width is 2. Oh sorry, width is t. So if you divide it by 2, so width by 2 is t by 2. And the amplitude should be area. So what is the area of this function? The amplitude is 1, width is t. So the area is simply t. Similarly here, you know it is going to be a sampling square function. Width, the value here should be width by 4. So this width is now 2t, so width by 4 is 2t by 4, so 2t by 4 is t by 2 and the amplitude should be area, so area you can say that half into 1 into 2t, half goes into height, which is cancel, so it's t sampling square of omega t by 2, so that is the Fourier transform, this is direct application of the shortcut that we saw yesterday. So now let's move to the next question. The next question is asking to find the Fourier transform of this pulse. It is not a exact rectangular pulse as we saw. So we cannot use our shortcut method directly in this. But still there is a way how we can use that shortcut here. So let I can just define this signal as so this signal can also be drawn as so you see I can just draw this signal as sum of two signals so basically this is your 0 right this value is 4 so this is your first signal and if I add it to a add it to this a signal which is defined like from 2 to 3 and has a value 4 again. So, if you add these two signals, you can see that you are going to get the same signal again. So, in this portion 2 to 3, these two signals will get added, the value 4 and 4 will become 8 and the rest of the part it would be 4 only. So, this is how you can get get this signal. Now what we will do is I am going to shift this signal to the origin like this. So it becomes a I will keep the width same as 5 so minus 2.5 to 2.5 because I want to make it symmetrical about the origin. So the amplitude is 4, there is no problem there. In this one again, I will keep the width as 1, so but shift it to the origin. So this becomes minus 0 0.52 plus 6 and 5. The amplitude 4. So basically, if I want to get my original signal from this signal, I have to just shift this. So, if this is my x of t, so this signal I can write just I will shift this signal with write 2.5 towards the right. So, if I shift replace t with t minus 2.5, so this signal I will get back this signal. So, x t minus 2.5 is this signal. So, this is x t, this is your x t minus 2.5 which is the one you require actually. Similarly here, if this is my signal say x of t, then I have to just shift it by 
flipped it right by 2.5. So this again becomes h e which value is minus 0.5. So if I shift it right by 2.5, this value would come at 2, and this value would come at 3. So I'll get back this same signal. So now what I have is two gate filters. Use Fourier transform. I can directly write using the shortcut. So let's just use that shortcut and write there Fourier transform. So now we know that this is a sampling function omega what is width by 2 here is 2.5 and what is the area here is 5 into 4 that becomes 20 and similarly here we have this signal which will be again a sampling function omega width by 2 is 0.5 here or we can write it as uh, omega by 2 and the area becomes width is 1 here height is 4 so the area is 4 so now friends we found the Fourier transform for these two but we had to find the Fourier transform for these two, the original signals, these ones. So now we know that the property that if xt has a Fourier transform of x of omega, we know that x of t minus t naught will have a Fourier transform of x of omega e to the power minus j omega t naught. So we can simply use this shifting property because we know that this is xt minus 2.5 and this is xt minus 2.5. So I am simply using that property here. So what will it become? It becomes 20 sampling of 5 omega by 2 into e to the power minus j omega 2.5. Simple as that. So here again it will become 4 sampling omega by 2 e to the power minus j 2.5 again. So this is how we wrote the Fourier transform for these two pulses. And now we know that we have this superposition property where if I found the Fourier transform for these two and if I am adding this and getting this signal, so if I am adding their Fourier transform as well. I will get the Fourier transform for my required signal. So that is the answer here. If you want to solve more, you can just take the common factors out and represent them outside the bracket. So this is how you can directly find the Fourier transform of a pulse which is not exactly a gate pulse but you can use shifting properties and scaling properties to change it to a gate pulse and then find its Fourier transform. So now friends the next question, the next question is about modulation property. So as I told yesterday that multiplication with cos or sine is termed as the modulation property. So what is the question saying here is if xt is a signal band limited to 5 kHz. So if there is a signal given xt with a, which is limited to 5 kHz in frequency and the Fourier transform of xt cos 2 pi into 10 to the power 60. So this is asking us to find this Fourier transform. So we know that the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t it is half of del of f minus f naught. This property we already discussed. We so how to found find this yesterday? I am directly using it here now. Del of f plus f naught. Let me write it as not omega naught ten. Let me write it as two pi f naught t. So this is this Fourier transform for this one. So if I want to draw spectrum, 
So this spectrum is basically two impulses at area half. area half at minus f naught and f naught. So how to remember this basically? So how you can remember this is whatever the signal is here, so the signal here was the one here, so just split it into two, so divide it into two. So if you divide it into two, the value becomes half and half and put those values as at this f naught frequency. So minus f naught and f f naught. So no need to remember this, just remember the graph for this. The graph, how you can find this? If you know, if you have this signal here, just pull it apart, make it into two parts, so the value becomes half and put those parts as f naught and minus f naught. So now, but this question is not asking cos 2 pi f naught t, it's asking for xt into cos 2 pi f naught t. So, the modulation property will come into picture. So basically, if I know I have xt cos 2 pi f naught t here, so if you have multiplication in time domain, you know that the, it is going to be a convolution in frequency domain. So it should be x of f convolution with Fourier transform of cos 2 pi f naught t. And with this, we know already know that it is equal to two impulses at f naught and minus f naught. And we have already seen convolution with impulse function. The convolution with impulse function, if I convolve x t with del t minus t naught, it is going to give me f t minus t naught. So using that same property here, I can write this as because this is now convolution with this cos function, so this half factor will be as it is and now this would be, this should become like x f minus f naught plus x of f plus f naught. So if I want to draw the spectrum here, so how can I draw this? This would be, now this original spectrum which was at uh, 0 here. Now this is getting shifted to f naught and minus f naught. So I am just shifting it here to a value f naught. Similarly, I also shift it this side to a value minus f naught. And this value now, if the amplitude, the original amplitude was something a, so if this amplitude was something a. Now, because of this half, it will become as a by 2. So, the same property that I told before, if you have multiplication with cos, that is the modulation property, you can just split that signal, the original spectrum, just split it into two parts. So, when you are splitting it into two parts, it becomes half, putting one part at f naught and put another part at minus f naught. So, even in the question, f naught was given to be 10 to the power 6, that is basically 1 megahertz. I can write it as 1000 kilohertz. And this was band limited to 5 kilohertz. So, these limits will now become, so if this is your 1000, I am writing this in kilohertz scale here. So, this becomes 1005 and this becomes minus Oh sorry, not minus. This becomes 995 kilohertz. Similarly here on the negative side. So this is how you get the Fourier transform of any function multiplied with cos function. So this is called the modulation property. Now you can clearly see here why it is called the modulation property. Because when I defined modulation in the previous lecture, I defined it as shifting of the original spectrum centered at the origin to some frequency much higher than 0. So I am shifting it to a frequency of 1 megahertz. So now this has become a modulated signal and 
you can definitely have the advantages of modulation here so this antenna height antenna height is reduced also you get the advantage of multiplexing from this so this is the gist of modulation how you got modulation just by multiplying with cos 2 pi f not t and this is the complete process how you can understand that how modulation happened so friends these are the questions based on what we saw yesterday so today's lecture i am i'll finish it here only with the questions but i encourage you to solve more questions could take some more questions on signals and systems because the better you are in signals and systems the better you will be in communication as well so solve more and more questions and i'll also make sure if you have any doubts you can just post it to our facebook page or you can mail me at uh, this uh, email id is sanaracademy.gate@gmail.com and i'll try to reply to your questions there so just put your doubts here and i'll try to reply to them so thank you friends thank you for watching this lecture please like our fb page and subscribe to our youtube channel for more such lectures thank you friends have a nice day